So if I want you to plot in the real axis, lambda, what is the region of uh, in the real axis for which the scheme is stable? How would you do that? Hmm? Yeah. What does lambda has to satisfy for the scheme to be stable? Lambda times delta t. Yeah, lambda times delta t has to be what? Less than. Less than. The whole thing, 1 plus lambda delta t has to be less than 1 and greater than minus 1, right? Which means lambda times delta t has to be less than what? Negative two. Right, it has to be between negative two and zero, right? Okay, which means lambda has to be in between negative two over delta t and zero. So it's this bound minus two over delta t and zero. So in this region, let me use uh, green to say this region is stable. Anything outside the region is unstable. Okay? This is the range of lambda for which the forward order is supposed to work. Yes? Oh, yeah. Sorry. Creating some weird uh, figures on the screen, right? Okay. Right? So the green region is the stability region of forward order. You shouldn't have any lambda that is greater than zero otherwise it won't work right you shouldn't also have lambda that is too negative it shouldn't be uh, less than minus two over delta t otherwise what you should do you should decrease your delta t exactly so that the green region expands as you decrease your delta t Right, it will ultimately encompass the lambda you want to solve. So forward order actually can solve all these equations, the scalar equations, with a negative lambda as long as you have a small enough delta t. Yeah, question? Oh, uh, I was about to ask you to scroll back up to see exactly what form is the because I was wondering. So this implies that like forward Euler doesn't work for exponentials with like exponent greater than. Right, okay. So your question is when lambda is greater than zero, what does forward order do? Uh, like it'll slowly diverge. It'll slowly diverge. And that's actually the behavior of the analytical equation, right? Yeah. So, so even if you use an exact OD solver, it'll slowly diverge if lambda is positive. So that's actually a very fundamental question is that uh, it actually has more general implication if we solve uh, dynamical systems that has chaotic behavior. Is that all these analysis we are going to be learning in this class doesn't really apply anymore. You need the more advanced uh, uh, tools in dynamical system in order to analyze the behavior of these differential equations. So all of these only apply for equations that are actually stable dynamically, which means for this particular linear OD, it actually means lambda needs to be less than zero, right? For this analysis to give you an indication of if the scheme is doing well or not. For example, when lambda is very negative, this equation should actually work, right? It goes to zero very quickly, but it, unless you choose a very small delta t for the order would actually give you a blowing up solution very quickly okay so that's one thing another thing is let's generalize this a little bit more what if lambda is not a real number well maybe you say that's not very interesting i'm not interested in complex differential equations but you will be interested in this very soon because when we look at a system of ordinary differential equations, 
it turns out by just doing some uh, uh, change of variables, you can actually decouple the system of uh, ODEs into several scalar ODEs. But now each scalar OD is going to have perhaps a complex lambda. Okay, so now if lambda is complex, you notice all these mathematics we are doing, right? The subtraction is going to work. The error now is going to be maybe a complex number, but this whole thing is going to work. And uh, the amplification factor now may become a complex number, but all the math we are doing actually applies not only to real lambdas, but also to complex lambdas. So now imagine I have a different axis. Now I have a complex axis. So I have an imaginary axis. Now this is the real part of lambda. This is imaginary part of lambda. Now tell me what region does lambda have to lie for forward order to work? Uh, 1 over delta t to minus 1 over delta t. 1 over delta t to minus 1 over delta t. That's, uh, that wouldn't work. Because if lambda is 1 over delta t, this term is going to be 1. 1 plus 1 is going to 2. 2 to the nth power okay, is going to blow. Like on the imaginary axis, so it wouldn't work? Like a circle. Also wouldn't work because if lambda is 1 over delta t is i over delta t, lambda times delta t would be i. 1 plus i to the nth power would be what? It's going to grow to like square root to the nth power, right? So you said something about a circle? Yeah, a circle of um, maybe 1 over delta t. That's right. This is... I already have uh, the region in the real axis, right? So whatever whatever the region have to be in the complex domain actually has to coincide with that region. Mm -hmm. It turns out it's going to be a circle. Makes sense, right? Because uh, the center of the circle is actually minus 1 over delta t. Because if lambda is actually minus 1 over delta t, the amplification factor is 0, right? And... Uh, uh, if you go up or down in the imaginary axis, uh, going up or down, it'll be the, the same. Okay, so I think I'm drawing this in the wrong place, right? I should actually be drawing this uh, uh, over here. All right. So now inside the circle is the stability region of forward order. Anywhere outside the circle is unstable. So that actually includes the whole imaginary axis. I have unstable anywhere over here. Okay, so if, for example, if lambda is equal to i, or 2i, or 0.0i, or 0.01i, my forward order is going to blow up. So that's actually why yesterday, when we used forward order to simulate the pendulum, you remember what did we see? we see things slowly diverging, right? Let's go back to yesterday's lecture. Uh, okay. You okay, good question. Is the values on the circle included in the stability region or not? It is included in the stability region, but any error I make is going to be carried over. It's never decayed, right? So. Yeah. So you will see the error just grow linearly as a function of time, right? It's like a, it's kind of like a inertial navigation system. The longer you, you stay in the air, the bigger error you have. But still, it works. Okay.